Alright, so this video is going to be covering chapter 11, section 3, which deals with gas volumes and the ideal gas law. And we're going to start off by looking at volumes of gases as they pertain to reactions. So let's start off with a simple reaction. Let's say the combustion of hydrogen in the presence of oxygen to form water vapor. And we'll just say these are all gaseous. So when scientists started doing experiments in the early 1800s reacting various gases, they found that they reacted in definite proportions of volume. So for example, if you had two liters of hydrogen, you could react it with one liter of oxygen to yield exactly two liters of water. And as long as you kept the pressure and temperature constant, you would always get these whole number ratios that corresponded to the chemical equation coefficients. And this law applies to all measurements of volume. For example, if you had 600 milliliters of hydrogen gas combined with 300 milliliters of oxygen, you would yield exactly 600 milliliters of water. It's the ratio that's important, not the actual number or unit of measurement. We're going to be moving on now to our old friend Avogadro and his law about gas volumes. And he discovered that there was a relationship between volume and the number of molecules in a gas. That is, for any given volume at a constant pressure and temperature, that that volume was always occupied by the same number of molecules. That is, volume is proportional to the number of molecules present, or the volume poor number of molecules is always some constant. To give you a more visual representation, let's say you have two balloons and you're holding the end to prevent air from getting out of balloons. Now assuming they're in the same room, that is they probably have the same pressure and same temperature, then they will also have, if they have the same volume as well, that means that they have the same number of molecules within each of them. And I'm sure you know from playing with balloons or whatever that as soon as you let some of the air out, that is some of the molecules will begin to escape, then the volume of the balloon will go down because the outside pressure will push in and there aren't sufficient enough molecules hitting the walls of the balloon often enough to fight this atmospheric pressure. Now this idea goes really well with the uh, volumes of reacting gases that we discussed earlier. For example, if you have one liter of hydrogen gas and therefore a certain number of molecules of hydrogen gas because again the volume and number of molecules are proportional and combine that with one liter of chlorine which will again have the same number because they have the same number of molecules, it means they will be able to react almost completely to form the two liters of hydrogen chloride. And just a little fact for later reference, Avogadro was able to use this relationship between volume and number of moles to determine that at standard temperature and pressure, that is one atm and zero degrees celsius, one mole of any substance occupies about 22.4 liters of space. Now we'll be able to use this fact later as a sort of conversion factor if you want to convert an amount of gas into its volume or if you want to find the weight of a certain volume of gas you'll have to be able to use this conversion factor right here in your calculations. Now we're going to actually be using this conversion factor in a process known as gas stoichiometry. And just to give you an example, we'll start off with the combustion of methane, which has the formula C3H8 and combines with five units of oxygen gas to yield three CO2 molecules and four water molecules. Now let's say we started off with 0.35 liters of methane and we wanted to find how many moles of oxygen 
we would need to completely combust this amount of methane. So what we'd do is we would use a molar conversion factor, or in this case a volume conversion factor, based on the coefficients. Now, for every one liter of methane, we need five liters of oxygen. And these whole number ratios work just fine as we learned earlier. Now you cancel those units and you want to know how many moles of oxygen you have. So you have to use this conversion factor right here for moles to liters and for every 22.4 liters you get one mole of oxygen. Now canceling those units out you end up with 0.078 moles of oxygen. And you could of course go on to use you know oxygen's molar mass to find how many grams of oxygen you have if you really wanted to. It's a simple calculation that we've already done in previous videos. Now combining all three laws we discussed last video with Avogadro's law, uh, we come up with one of the most important equations in all of chemistry known as the ideal gas law. And that is represented by PV equals NRT. And just to dissect that a little, P is of course the pressure, V is the volume, N is the number of moles or molecules within a gas, R is a gas constant that we'll discuss later on in the video, and T is of course the temperature. And you can see that if you keep the number of moles constant, you can move the T down under here and it becomes PV over T equals K, the combined gas law that we discussed last video. Now we're going to be discussing this R a bit more closely because it is an invaluable part of the ideal gas law. Now R is what is known as the ideal gas constant. And R has been calculated through experimentation where you can just rearrange this equation to be R equals PV over NT to be about 0 0.0821. And what are the units of R? Well, you have to make them equivalent to what is on this side. So the units for R that we're most often going to be using in this book will be 0 0.0821 atmosphere uh, liters per mole Kelvin. And that is just to balance out the pressure, which corresponds to the atmosphere right here, the volume, which corresponds to the liters right here, the moles, which correspond to the moles right here, and the temperature, which correspond to the Kelvin right here. Now, when you're doing calculations with the ideal gas law, it is very important to make sure that all the values you're using for the pressure, volume, moles, and temperature are in the right uh, units. So if you have a measurement given in kilopascals or something like millimeters of mercury, then you're going to have to convert it to atmospheres for this R that we're using because the value of R has different units and therefore a different value for various situations. However, the R we're going to be using in this curriculum is most often going to be this 0 0.0821 atmosphere liters per mole degree Kelvin. So now I'm just going to do one sample problem with the ideal gas law that we have here. So let's say we want to find the pressure in atmospheres of a half mole sample of nitrogen gas in a 10 liter container at a temperature of 298 kelvins. And the first thing you want to do whenever you're attempting one of these problems, because there are so many different values that you're going to be using, you want to write down all your givens and make sure that they're in the right units. So we use atmospheres, liters, and degrees kelvin as well as moles and right now it looks like all our givens are in the right units so we don't do have to do any conversions. Now the next thing I like to do is convert 
the actual formula for the ideal gas law right over here so that the variable we're solving for in this case pressure in atmospheres is alone so I would convert this so that P equals N R T over V then what you can do is simply plug in your various values that is 0.5 moles and then this is 0 0.0821 uh, atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin I know it's a mouthful times the temperature which is 298 Kelvin over the volume in this case 10 liters now you can check that you've set up the problem by seeing if you can cancel out all the units except for the one you want so in this case you have a mole in a numerator and a mole in the denominator so you can cancel those out same with kelvins as well as the liters which is good because in the constant you only end up with pressure in atmospheres so once you've canceled the units correctly you can then just do the math and figure out that you have 1.22 atmospheres of pressure on this percent particular sample of nitrogen gas.